You can't carbon date stone, as it's often repeated by archaeologists, and I agree. However, we don't want to know how old the rocks are. They're millions of years old anyway and have nothing to do with human history. We want to know how old the construction is that employs them. This opens the door to carbon dating from organic materials found around them or in them. Specifically, if one simply lifts up a block in a construction away from its fellows, the underlying plane of contact will contain material suitable for carbon dating that was left there when the construction was made. We are assuming that the stones are placed and have remained in place for whatever time has elapsed since their construction. When these constructions were made, particularly the tight-fitting stonework, just prior to setting the stone, a workman would have swept the surface with some sort of broom to make sure that there were no small stones or debris that would subvert the fit. This means that anything left by him as beneath notice remains locked in place. These might include fragments of the straw broom, stray insects, a leaf or seed blown in by the wind after sweeping, even a workman's stray finger caught in an accident. For certain there will be pollen, the analysis of which would give information about the dominant flora of the region at the time of construction. To obtain these samples, it would be necessary to build a temporary clean room around the blocks to be checked after lifting. Then an expandable sheet must be affixed to the stones to ensure that no unfiltered air entered the gap produced by lifting a block. So two air tubes must be ready to do the work of diligently vacuuming out all the surfaces that are exposed, one to allow unfiltered air and one tube for the vacuum cleaner whose outflow would be put through a very fine filter to extract anything as small as pollen. This would be a fairly expensive and exacting scientific foray into archaeology, but should yield definite results, if even a tiny bit of datable material were to be found. For AMS dating, as little as a few milligrams may be sufficient to yield a usable date. AMS stands for Accelerator Mass Spectrometry, which is the acceleration of ions of the atoms of interest. Magnetic or electric fields then separate the isotopes of these atoms, and these atoms can be individually counted. For our purposes, carbon-12 and carbon-14 would be separated and counted to yield the ratio corresponding to the age of the organic material. A good example to try for would be the age of the Sphinx. If we assume that the Sphinx was carved about the same time that the related temples were constructed, lifting a block on the temple in the aforementioned manner would probably settle the issue of its age to the nearest millennium, either from AMS dating or pollen analysis. All that is required is the lifting of two tight-fitting blocks and the permit to do so. Getting the permit would be the hard part. The age of the Sphinx is a political fact, as well as an archaeological one. Politicians who back the conservative, mainstream archaeologists would have nothing to gain by doing this experiment, and would lose face if it turned out that the Sphinx was older than presently thought. Those who doubt the presently accepted age of the Sphinx would have much to gain if indicated but would lose all credibility if it turned out to have been built at the time of the Khafre Pyramid. Certainly, if a quarter-inch piece of straw were discovered when lifting a block, the world would hold its collective breath while the AMS data were generated. It would be incredibly interesting to tens of millions of people. The main problem with the Sphinx is the water weathering of the Sphinx enclosure. I haven't yet seen any analysis of the time that the enclosure has been covered in sand and therefore not subject to such weathering. Certainly it's a great deal of the time since it was made. Nature fills in holes with sand much more than it excavates them. 
The head has been recarved and is thus too small for the body, and the head is set back too far. These are expected results of recarving. I personally think that the Sphinx may be older than mainstream archaeologists maintain because of the investigations of West, Schock, Hancock, and others. They have made the idea popular and interesting. Still, it may be completely wrong. An AMS test would be the decisive end or beginning of real discussions concerning antediluvial civilizations. The same technique of microscopic examination of the plane of contact of tight-fitting stonework would work anywhere on earth.